What's good, everybody? Another week on the PGA Tour. That means another week of your show of record in golf betting and golf education and entertainment. This is Cash Out with the Coaches. I am your host, the coach, John of the Coachman, and my partner, one of the great teaching minds in the world today, Travis Fulton. And Trav, last week, I'm getting closer. I'm like, if, if I if my winners could be top fives, I'd be catching about every single week. I got close with Abraham Answer, uh, but Sam Burns ultimately gets it done. Welcome to the show. Welcome to another week. Yeah, Sam Burns, no surprise. If you follow this show, you've been listening um, to us for the last uh, really four or five months. I've been touting Sam Burns Big time. for a long time, coming out of LSU, very talented player, has the PGA Tour game. He can send it, good iron player, great putter, and particularly on Bermuda, and it was just a matter of time. Uh, you know, sometimes you just kind of talk yourself out of it. I've picked Sam Burns to win mm -hmm. at least once on this show. Um, and he finished, I think it was back in, I think I picked him back at AT&T and, and you know, sometimes you, it's easy to come off of him, right? Cause we only can pick one, but every week Sam Burns is always on the radar and he should be moving forward because this is not going to be a one hit wonder. He is the real deal and we're going to see him more and more contending. And you could just see, I think from the previous experiences, he was in the hunt. He's led the most rounds on the PGA tour. He just looked more comfortable. I know Keegan hit one in the water, but Burns looked comfortable. He hit a lot of really good shots down the stretch. And I, I really feel like this will be the first of many to come. We're really in a, a, a changing of trends, so to speak on the PGA tour right now. And I think it's really hard for fans to adjust to new names that are up yeah. there all the time, like Sam Burns to some of the old names like a Keegan Bradley, who is having a resurgence and really have to telling themselves is this truly what I want to do for the next five to 10 years? Because there's so many of these young cats that are taking these spots that I put Keegan in the same category as a Charlie Hoffman, a Stuart Sink, guys that really had to look at themselves in the last 18 months and say, is this what I want to do? Keegan has his game back. But when I watched it Sunday, I really felt like at some point, because he always does this, there was going to be a water ball. There was going to be a big hole and he Stop. was going to end up losing it. And that's Stop. exactly what he does. It is no, and he made a nice, a nice second place finish. But you, you, you tell me the last time that Keegan was in the hunt that he finished the job. Hey, tell me the last time Keegan has had a run like this of just decent putting. I mean, he hasn't been in contention that's true. coach. I mean, he hasn't been, no, but, but there's been, contention. there's been some weeks in the last 12 months where you'll see him on the leaderboard on Friday or Saturday. And he's got that one hole every single round. I'm not talking about on Sunday. I'm talking about every round. He's got that one or two holes. Cause I bet, I believe me, I bet him a lot. I've got it in mm -hmm. my book and he, he more than any other player on the PGA tour, you can look at your phone and be like, Oh, I'm up two shots. And then all of a sudden you're down one because he threw up a triple. Yeah, I think you have to. I think you have to look at the big picture with Keegan. You're looking at it in the head-to-head -head style as a a gambler with emotion, show? with emotion yeah, who's, show. who's losing money consistently. <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> but that. you got to look at. I mean, the, the big picture with Keegan Bradley is this: <laughs> he learned how to putt with a belly putter, right? That's that's how he putt his whole life, and he was mm -hmm. a very good player, winning. Major championship, major championship, absolutely. And then they take that away from him, and he had to really learn. He had to teach himself how to putt again, and it's been an absolute grind. Can you imagine being one of the best ball strikers on the PGA Tour? You're in, mm -hmm. you're out, and you just consistently lose negative three, negative four, mm -hmm. negative five putting, and you can't sniff it for years. I mean, that's got to be the most frustrating thing. He stayed with it. He's got the arm brace now, lock, which is a lot of controversy over that because of. Bryson DeChambeau winning U.S. Open of course. and Will Zaltoris having so much success. Now, people are having success with this now that we must take that away as well. Keegan Bradley would have the worst luck in professional golf history if they took Did that, that away from him now because he's finally figuring out at least to have his head above water in strokes gained putting, which for him is like positive one, positive okay. two. So let me ask you this. I agree with everything you just said. You disagreed with my take on Keegan, but everything you just said fed right into my narrative. You said that he had to struggle because of the putting. Yes, that, that's part of the reason he's had a lot of these big numbers and he ends up moving backwards every single round, even though he has really good ball striking numbers. And if you have one part of your game, and it's not just Keegan, it could be a lot of guys, one part of your game that is missing, 
that usually affects whether or not not just winning, but making cuts and earning a living and keeping your PGA Tour card. He's lucky he did that a couple yeah. of years ago. I'm a Keegan Bradley fan. Believe me. Yeah, the but I think if you're betting ball. Keegan, you know what you're getting coming in. Like, I've bet Keegan All I said was you felt like, show. but but every single round, he does what he did Sunday. That was my only point. Well, I don't think Keegan. so. I don't think he yeah. does that. I don't think he hits that shot. That was where he loses it with it his ball striking. It wasn't specifically about the shot. It was about a hole. It's about he blows up on a hole. It's not about the shot. At some point, whether it's a, a bad putt, whether it's a ball in the water, whether it's a bad chip, whatever it is, he throws a six or seven up there and it affects. And here, I, you know me, I always preach on the show. It's head to head. You've got to grind. The only way you make money in golf betting is on head to head matchups. That's it. If you, if you try to make money on props, you will go broke. I yeah, promise I, you that. I think you've got a lot of emotion in the head to head because he's, he's done you dirty a little bit there, which, <laughs> which is a different Maybe, kind yeah. of, which is a different narrative than big picture Keegan Bradley. True. I, I'm only talking from the betting aspect. Yeah. All right. So Sam Burns wins. Keegan makes me and Trav disagree. But then also, You've got a guy that's going to be very prevalent on our board for this week that is showing week in and week out, even if he doesn't threaten for the win. Victor Hovland is a top five, top 10 machine, and it doesn't matter the course. It doesn't matter the style. This dude shows up every single week, and I, 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 not we, I have to stop picking against him. (laughs) Well, what is it with Vic? Tell us what it is with Vic that you have to start picking against him. He doesn't Speak have the one. He doesn't because have the, the one. The reason I pick hole. against him is, is, is he has so many good weeks in a row just by human nature. You would think that he would have an off week, but his off week is a top 25 now. Well, he missed That's the cut how at the good players. He's become. Missed yeah. the cut at the players, 49th at Arnold Palmer. I, I, I didn't touch him at the players because okay. he, he's so young. You know that when you go to TPC Sawgrass, uh, you rarely have ever see a guy that's brand new do anything, but I just steered clear of him. But with these regular courses on tour that don't have the personality of a TPC, I mean, this dude, uh, I, I can't cherry, I, I guess you can't cherry pick. I can't cherry pick and come in and just say, okay, this is going to be the week. You either got to consistently play him. And I think we're yeah. seeing that with a Sam Burns or yeah. a, a fee now when you're talking top tens, that these trends are now not just one or two weeks, Trav. We're starting to see trends of, of months. And I think that's the most difficult thing when it comes to golf betting right now is staying on a train or a player for more than just one week and trusting that process. You got to start eating breakfast coach. I think this, this whole thing is, (laughs) you think it's getting to my head, but all this intermittent fast. I don't even, it's like, I'm listening to a, I'm listening to a foreign language right now. Like I don't even, like, I don't even, it's it's okay. I mean, you're, you're doing a show with a golf betting expert. So Sometimes it sounds like a porn language. That's what it is. I understand. Okay. I understand. All right, let's let's uh, let's spin it forward to this week, the Wells Fargo Championship. And there have certainly been some winners in the scheduling, and there have been some losers. The Wells Fargo is a big-time winner because of where it is now on the schedule. Two weeks before the PGA Championship. Though, so this is the tournament that a lot of top players are using as the tune-up to the year's second major. So you've got four of the top five in the world, six of the top nine. You've got the Green Mile, one of the great three-hole stretches uh, in golf. Take our followers through what they can expect, what type of a player does play well at this very, very difficult quail hollow course. Well, this is a this is a beautiful place, first and foremost. Uh, great stop on the PGA Tour. You know, gets a lot of the good players here, six of the top nine are in the field and you know i think you're i think we're going to see now the long ball really play out here that this is a course where i think players have a hard time hitting the fairway no matter what distance they're hitting it off the tee so you might as well just Mm -hmm. grab the driver and send it right like we saw at the u.s open with bryson it's going to be interesting to see bryson here he was fourth back in 2018 he's bringing 30 more yards to the table can he um overpower quell hollow we've seen big hitters I think prevail here for the most part. You know, Rory's won twice. Tiger's won here. Anthony Kim back in the day. DJ's played well here. Phil's played well here. Uh, But then we've seen some long shots too. You know, we've seen a Max Homa um, win here. We've seen a Brian Harmon win here. So there's that long shot capability. But I do think um, you're going to see a lot of 300 plus drives here. Guys really sending it off the tee. I think as a result, the proximity tends to be a little closer here. 
um, you know, on the approach shots. And then we're into those fast, firm Bermuda greens, much like we saw last week at Valspar. I think it'll be similar surfaces there. A um, little bit of lightning in the greens um, last week, which was nice to see two weeks in a row there with the Zurich. I think we could probably see something similar here, weather permitting. So, you know, strokes and approach, and I think strokes gain putting are, are one and one a here approach sometimes gets really ahead you know really elevates itself on certain venues but i think you have to move the putting up here um you're gonna have to knock some birdies down so i think strokes and approach strokes and putting is one and one a and then underneath that i think you have to you have to go strokes and off the tee with a little more emphasis with driving and move that up just under those two like i certainly have and then at the bottom i think strokes and around the th- around the green I, I i'm probably gonna condense that down just a little bit more. So I'm looking for, look, let's send it off the tee. Um, let's get the good iron player, tight proximity. Let's putt for a lot of birdies. And then um, let's let's make some putts here on these fast Bermuda greens. And look, I, I think you look historically here, you've, you've seen some epic putting weeks here. I mean, epic putting weeks. Max Homa had his best putting week of his career here last year, positive 9.9. I was looking through some things. And there's a lot of positive six and sevens and eights. Like guys have really got the putter hot here. And I think that probably speaks to the surfaces of being so good. So look for who can, who can, who can catch a little fire, you know, with that putter this week on these surfaces and take advantage of maybe some distance and some tight proximity to the hole. Yeah, there is uh, a lot of good video of a couple of years ago when Max Homa got the job done. And remember, there was that uh, weather delay in the middle of the round. His good buddy, Joel Damon, made it very, very comfortable for him. Uh, Damon finishing second that particular yep. year. Uh, but this is certainly, I mean, we're talking uh, about a venue that four years ago, they had to move this tournament because this was a major championship venue. Right. That's how good this course is. And I think to your point, when you put the strokes gained off the tee because of how long this course can play at over yep. 7,500 yards. Uh, it's very, very uh, easy to feed into the narrative. And I'm certainly going, I'm done fighting my mind when it comes to making picks. I'm feeding into the long hitters this yep. week and understanding that right now they've got their games. They've got their top games. And I think they're firing on all cylinders, knowing what's coming in two weeks. How much do you think they're thinking about the track that's coming based off of what they're going to try to do this week? No, that's hard to say. I think uh, when I'm asked that question, I think it's player dependent. You know, I think there's probably a couple players here or there that might be, might be looking ahead. Um, But I think for the most part, these guys are wired, like what's right in front of them, the intensity of that round, you start getting, you make the cut, you get into the hunt. It's all about what's happening right now. So it's, it's out there. I mean, I think Rory comes to mind. I, I don't think, I don't know if I've ever been more excited to watch Rory McIlroy play golf than I am this week, because I have no idea what we're going to see. You know, we haven't seen him in a while. Um, He was a mess when he left. He admitted, you know, chasing distance. Pete Cowan's had some time with him. What's he going to look like? This is a course he's won twice at. He's won at Kiwa, you know, so he's got a little runway here of some courses that he likes. Can he start putting some pieces back together this week? I think will be the player probably to look at if I was looking ahead right towards the PGA championship. Can he at least show that? Yeah, I'm on the right track again and uh, make the cut, be competitive. You know, I don't think he has to win, but just show us that he's not hitting it all over the map. He was so lost the last time that we saw him. There is no way. The only thing I would do this week for those watching at home, if you look at a play on Rory McIlroy, it would be to fade him because you cannot bet on him because you don't know what you're going to get. And the, I think the, the over play narrative is well, he can flip the switch whenever he wants to. Yeah. That's just not the case anymore. No. He's not doing that anymore. And I'm not willing to bet on Rory McIlroy coming back to this course and saying, this is where he's going to fix it. Cause we haven't seen him in a month. I'm not willing to bet on that. I'm willing to bet against it but I'm not willing to bet on it. And the other big name that also has played well here in the past is Ricky Fowler. In the last, what, three weeks, Trav, you couldn't find a bet on a head-to-head matchup on Ricky Fowler because the sports books just don't want to lose that money, 
But now because he's on a course that he's played well in the past, all of a sudden the books are saying, well, we can bet on Ricky again. <laughs> You're going to see in my, in my picks that yeah. I was all over that one this week. You can best believe that <laughs> best believe that uh, some of the big names before we get into our picks playing this week, Justin Thomas, Rom, Xander, Bryson, Patrick Reed, Webb Simpson, Patrick Cantlay, Rory, Tony Fina, Victor Hovland, just to name a few. All right, let's get into it this week. Yep. We've been really good on our head to heads uh, recently. This is how we do it every single week. And we want you to play at home with us. We take a hundred bucks and we sprinkle it over five different picks, two head to head matchups, a top 20 pick, a tournament winner, and then a wild card play, which can be anything on the board. All right. Trav, you were up first. As always, give me your first head-to-head matchup. Well, might surprise you. Two names that were not mentioned in the big mm-hmm. names. Me on a Griot minus 120 over Russell Henley. I'm going to stay with Griot. He's been good to me um, for the most part. Um, gosh, he looks so good at RBC. Finished second behind Sink. I think he really looked in control of this putter. Um, has had some good track record here. 2018, he was T9. Henley, you know, we see that name a decent amount pop up. He's a good play here or there. He's missed the cut here the last two years. Interesting there. So I'm going to stay away from Henley and I'm going to go back to the well here uh, with Grio, who just had a bizarre week last week. I, I have no idea what happened to Grio on Friday. It, it was like a different person dressed up as a Miano. He played a beautiful round five under on Thursday. Looked just like he did at RBC in control ball striking machine, putter comfy. And then he goes three over on the back nine on the par fives and shoots five over to miss the cut. Like what happened? I have, I mean, it's just, it's just a weird turn of events for Grio. So, you know, sometimes you can come off that player quickly. I'm going to stay with him. We know off the tee, he's going to get it done. We know the approach game. He's going to get it done. His short game gets a little clunky. I'm not scared here at this venue. Let's just kind of get back to what he was doing with the putter, which to me has been showing some good signs. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think head to head over Henley, I'll stay with my man, EG. I'm so glad you made this pick because I faded the heck out of Russell Henley last week and won three different bets uh, on Henley in my personal uh, plays. Uh, and this to me would be as much about Henley as it would be about Grillo. Uh, but Grillo's been terrific. Now I follow a lot of golf shows more for just to kind of see the production and realize Mm -hmm. that Cody, our producer is the best in the business, but I also listen to the content and the kiss of death trap is when a show, and I'm not going to name the show, but I think, you know, the one I'm talking about when you come out after a good first round, and that's something we will never do. And you start bragging about, I picked this guy to win. Go make the bet right now after 18 holes. What? And that's the kiss of death. When you do a video on social media and it's on telling somebody to go make a bet (laughs) on your winner based off 18 holes, the kiss of death. And the show did that. I knew, (laughs) I knew Friday was going to be bad. Okay. My first head to head matchup this week. And I told you, I told you I wasn't wasting any time. 30 bucks. Bubba Watson, who's playing really good golf, played great at the uh, match play, played really good at the Zurich, played decent. Uh, Since then, minus 145. I've only got to lay 45 cents against a dude who doesn't know if he's hitting left or right. And just because he's had success on this course before, we've seen the odds for Ricky at other courses this year, like the players that have come in and said, oh, he's, you know, he's he's, he's done well here before. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I I never do that. This is a 5% bomb of the week, but. I am going to bet a little bit more in my personal money on this matchup because I love it so much. Yeah, Bubba's interesting. This is the first time he's played here since 2013 um, where he missed the cut. But he, I, I, I kind of get the feeling with Bubba that he's really motivated by the way he's playing right now. He's had some mm-hmm. good finishes. Um, the putters kind of caught some form. So I think he probably enrolled here thinking, let's let's ride this thing out. And, of course, him and Ricky are good friends. Um I think it's going to be interesting to see with Ricky here. You know, he gets the special invite to the PGA championship. Um, This is a place that he's played well at. Uh, I'm I'm surprised that he hasn't, you know, kind of cut ties and moved on into a different direction to this point, because clearly what he's been doing with his changes, they just haven't panned. I I want to ask you real quick, because I'm glad you brought that up because on the CBS show that I do, it was, it was kind of a mixed bag on, 
whether or not guys are bothered with the fact that Ricky got the special invite and whether or not, because he is so well liked, if guys, even in the locker room, Trav, do you think privately there are some guys that are bothered by the fact that he got that special invite? Yeah, I think anytime you get a special invite, it's always going to be a mixed bag, right? I mean, it's, it is what it is. I mean, Ricky Fowler probably has, he's earned it. I mean, he's done a lot for the game of golf. You know, he's a, uh, there's no question. He, he's, there's no question. Um, you know, he's definitely on the downward trend. And I think sometimes when you have players like this, who are kind of falling here a little bit, it's easy just to kind of kick them to the side. And, but you know, I think it's, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the PGA coming out, giving him an invite coming in. Maybe this is what he needs to, you know, kind of get motivated again. I don't know. And turn the tie. I think it's more than just motivation, but I, I'm okay with it, but I think anytime you get these special invites and this and that, and that's open for discussion and debate, you're going to have a mixed bag. It's, it's no different. It would be no different than probably anyone else. I, I would tell a player if they have a, a complaint, because anybody that follows me at all knows I fall on the entertainment side and Ricky is popular and I'm okay with it because yeah. he is popular. Even if it has nothing to do with the game, yeah. it's good to have him there. And if another player wants to complain, then do something off the course to make yourself relevant. That's what I would tell them. Do something off the course to make yourself relevant. And that's why the PGA Tour just started this $40 million uh, purse of money to basically bait these players into doing stuff off the course and not being a robot like a Patrick Cantlay, for instance. You've got to show me that you want me to watch you. Do you want me to watch you? Then show me that, not just that little wave. Give me something entertaining. And that's what the PGA Tour is doing, the PGA Tour of America is doing it too. Okay. Play number two for you, Trav. Who, where are you going on, on the second matchup? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to go with Charles Schwartzel here. Oh, he's playing some good golf. Interesting. I'm only giving up 10 cents to Francisco mm-hmm. Molinari. And, um, you know, Molinari like Ricky has had some success here. T12 mm-hmm. back in 2018, T24 back in 2017. But this is, this is a different Francisco Molinari. I mean, this is a completely different player uh, right now. I mean, you look at him, he had, I think he, he was showing some signs early in the year. Um, we saw him kind of make some cuts, pop the leaderboard there, eighth at the American Express, 10th at the Farmers, had some success there on the West Coast, eighth at Genesis. Mm-hmm. But since coming to the East Coast, it's been, it's been much the same. You know, some bad golf, a lot of missed cuts, 52nd at the Masters. So I just think Francisco is a much different player coming in. And then you go to the flip side, Charles Schwartzel, uh, who's also had success here. He was T Knight back in 2018. He's playing some great golf, second at the Zurich. Probably would have had a chance to win if Louie doesn't, uh, you know, into the water Drop there. It. 21st yep. at the Valspar, 26th at the Masters. And uh, I think with Charles, like, the strengths for me when I look at him, iron game and putting. So sign me up for that coming into quail hollow against a guy who is really kind of reeling right now um, and trying to find his game. I think once again, and get it back to some form, like we were seeing on the West coast, but since he's come to the East coast, he's been bad. I I don't know if you intentionally did this or not, but I like the fact that you picked a matchup that they're uh, also similar in length because Schwartzel is not the longest hitter, right? but neither is Molinari. So you're not giving up anything in that aspect, right? Yeah. It's not a, you know, neither one of these two. And I was looking at it at DraftKings Sportsbook and it's like, these are the two and they're not the sexiest names. Right. And I get that, but it's like, these two make the most sense. And like you said, Mm -hmm. we've had a lot of success um, and, and definitely, batting a good clip here with these head to head. So I elected the pass on some of the bigger names yep. come down here to these two more, these matchups, more comparable players and who I think is probably trending the right way versus the wrong way. So it made the most sense here with Schwartzel and Grio. It's interesting that you should say just that, because that's a great segue, Trav, right into my second head to head matchup. I went down the board as well. And I went with a dude who just won a few weeks ago, but it yep. was at an off event. It wasn't at a main event, but he did one for the first time in Puerto Rico. And it's one of the more emotional wins you're ever going to see on the PGA tour. He's been working a long time. The stories of Joel Damon are legendary of him and his caddy and the belief in the two. And they finally have won. And I think that's going to really free up Damon who two years ago was in the exact same spot that he was in Puerto Rico. He was right there on Sunday playing head to head against his good buddy, Max Homa, who was also looking for his first win and to find his feeding on the PGA tour. 
and both guys rooted for each other. It was so cool to watch. But this year, I think Joel Damon comes in with a whole new kind of confidence with that victory. Minus 140 over Keith Mitchell, who was so hot and cold. I just don't know which Keith Mitchell is going to show up every week. Damon, history here. I'll take him laying the 40 cents. I, I'm a little scared for you on this one, coach. I, I don't, I don't know. Damon, Damon is, well, he, it's fun. It's amazing that he went to Corrales and win considering his form, right? I mean, I know. Yeah. six of seven cuts he missed. Then he goes 74th at Valero. He's not hitting the ball very good. His approach game is, is not good right now. And his putting is trending the wrong way. I'll tell you what you owe me for a pick, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll take Mitchell and we'll go double up. So, oh, I was, oh, I've been waiting for you to give me a chance to win it back. That's a done deal. Okay. Done deal. And just for full disclosure, we don't discuss this before the show. This wasn't like no. something that, it, no, no, I'll take it. Okay. Double double up, gonna, I'll I, take I owe you hundred bucks. God damn it. Okay. All right. All right. All right cool. Right, yep. All okay. right. I love that. All right. Let's move on now to our top 20 pick of the week. And who do you like to come in and maybe not win, but, but cash a nice little top 20 ticket. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if he did win. Um, Will Zalatoris, uh top 20. I mean, look, I mean, Will went to, you know, he went to Wake Forest. I mean, he knows a thing or two about, you know, playing golf in, uh, in, in North Carolina here, plus 175. Uh, he, he was a little tired there when he was playing a he lot was, of he golf. Was worn he, out. he needed some time off. Yeah. He's got it. He's going to come back fresh. And uh, off we go. Look, this golf course, I mean, it should be a really good setup for him. Take advantage of his length. We know he can go with his iron game. And I got to tell you, his putting has been much better than advertised. I think that's one of the most surprising things to me of the year is how well Will has putted. And, you know, watching him at the Corn Ferry Tour um, and coming out here, I, he's exceeded my expectations in particularly with that flat stick. And that's been the difference. Mm -hmm. I think when you look at all of these top finishes, I don't need to list them off. We know what they are. The most impressive one being second at the masters. So, you know, I just look at the way he hits the ball and I look at the numbers of the players who have won here. If Will Zal Torres has that coming out party where he goes plus six with the putter, he hasn't had that yet. You know, that's the, he hasn't had that where he blitzes it with the putter. You know, no. he's had the plus three, the plus four, the plus four and a half. Like he's had those, but I'm talking the plus six, seven, eight. Homa was nine. Left. If he has that, he wins. I mean, that's, that's the rest of the game is in place. So I think a top 20 is appropriate here at plus 175 in North Carolina. Come on. Do not go back and look at his numbers from the RBC. I, I made one too many bets on yeah. him that week. Uh, that was an outlier. You mentioned it. He was exhausted. He yeah, played he like whatever, eight weeks in a row, something like seven out of eight, yeah. something like that. Uh, I think he's going to be rested now, three weeks off. And I love this play. He's he's certainly also the one of the outliers, like a Hovland, like a Morikawa, that normally you don't like to play somebody who's coming to a venue for the first time. It's just not a smart thing to historically do. But Will Zalatoris has shown us that it doesn't matter the course, even Augusta National. The first time you show up and you do that, that means you're an outlier. And I love this play. Love this play. And you're getting it at almost plus 200. I love that value. My top 20 pick, I'm done picking against this dude. I'm done <laughs> picking against this dude. I'm taking my boy. And he's now my boy. Victor Hovland, plus 100. The quietest third place finish. Yep. that you're ever going to see on the PGA tour. And that's how good he has become. He just, he's so steady every single week, always has one of those really low rounds to set himself up for a Sunday high finish. Even if it's not for the win to me, even with all the top players, Trav, Victor Hovland is now in that conversation of the top 15, 20 players in the world. And I like it at plus money this week. Yeah. I totally agree. You know, 65, it was 65 on Sunday with a silly bogey on 17. Mm -hmm. I mean, he blitzed Copperhead on Sunday. I mean, he brought it to its knees and made the game look very, very easy on a, a very difficult Sunday setup too. hundred percent. He, he, he showed me a lot in not winning last week, but really he probably made himself $400,000 just on Sunday. 
I would guess three to four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, at least yeah. something like that. Yeah. All right, it's time to get to our winner, and I, I think that you're you're kind of happy with my top twenty. Yeah. Pick, I, well, I he's probably going to finish second, losing. A play, <laughs> or he's going to he's, uh, he's going to finish That's first this. and beat Will Zalatoris uh, in a playoff, probably. <laughs> but twenty to one, you know, I don't want to come off as chalk here too much, but I, I felt like all right. Let's let's go Victor here, right? There's guys ahead of him, JT, Bryson, Rom, Shafle, Webb. These guys are all ahead of him. So I'll come on down to Hovland here, who's not like this prolific multiple winner on the PGA Tour. He's still young. He's still finding his way. Um, but I think he's getting hot, coach. I think he's so I think I. he's starting to warm up again. And we saw him early in the year where he went second, fifth, second in three straight tournaments after winning. Uh, the OHL in late December. And then he, um, he kind of, you know, a little clunky there at API and the players look good at the masters look great at Valspar. I'm going to, I'm going to take it a step further here now and say that he wins. And I think with Victor, the driving is extraordinary. The iron game is extraordinary. I think the putter is really kind of settling in nicely. His short game. I was really encouraged on the shots that he hit last week. He hit two shots on the weekend where he threw the ball up in the air, right? And that may seem pretty elementary, but when you when you struggle getting the bounce under the club and you get that leading edge on the ground like he likes to do, that's his default and kind of hit everything more trapped and penetrating. When he hit those shots up in the air, out of the bunker, off a tight lie, I was like, wow, that's some growth. So I think his short game is coming along. He was in the positive for the first time in a long time last week. So I I think he feels like now that, look, I know I'm one of the best ball strikers in the game. I might, I know my putting's good enough. I'm okay. Missing a green now. Like I'm okay. Like I'm okay there. Like I can hit that shot. So that just kind of frees him up a little bit more. I think this, this next win is coming and I'm hoping it's this week so I can go to the outback and have a steak. <laughs> I, I, I do need to point something out here because I got a couple of tweets this week and I, I can't believe that I even have to explain this, but for those of you watching at home or listening on Apple or Spotify, so Travis puts $5 on uh, Victor Hovland. That's part of a kind of a translation into, I use the word sprinkle a little bit. You don't want to pull to full, a full bet size on a winner. Cause it's so hard to do. So last week, I had somebody on, on Twitter, Trav, actually say mm-hmm. to me, coach, you said to bet $10 on this guy. to win. I was like, oh, my goodness. These numbers we're putting next to our picks are basically how confident we are with the $100 we have to work yeah. with. And when you're picking a winner, we only put 5 or 10 bucks on it because we would never put 50 of our 100 on it. So just understand the information we're giving you, and it's not the actual dollar amount that we're telling you to bet right. on a winner. It's, right. I can't believe I explained it, but – if there's even one person that is confused, we don't want that. Right. Okay. My winner this week, I feel like there's going to be a trend two weeks in a row. Talk about Sam Burns, Tony <laughs> Finau a lot together this week, this year. I'll let you finish. I will let you finish. Sometimes trends, you have to feed into them trap. Sometimes trends, you have to feed into them trap. And last week, we never thought Sam Burns was going to be able to get it done. And Sunday, what? he put his stamp. He put his stamp about? on the winner at the Valspar. So I think Tony Finau watched that last week. And he said to himself, this is my time. It's my time to go down to Charlotte, North Carolina. Just like the nature boy. Ric Flair did all those years styling and profiling <laughs> straight down <laughs> to victory lane. It's also a big NASCAR play, too. Thank you. (laughs) So I think Tony Finau feels himself this week amongst all the stars of the game and gets the job done for the first time on continental United States of America. Plus 2,800. I'm cashing straight to that pay window. What do you think, Trev? Uh, I think I'm going to send you a box of cereal (laughs) and some (laughs) almond milk and a banana. I'm so hungry. I can't even think straight. I'm so hungry. (laughs) Christmas. This is after the, this is after the lecture of Keegan Bradley, not putting stuff away. And then you come around and pick Fina to win. I'm on fire. They're all going to cash. I can feel it. I can feel it. Uh (laughs) (laughs) 
You buy a uh, bee, uh, and buy a <laughs> carton of orange juice. <laughs> All right, we've got one play left to make mercifully on this week's show. It's our wild card play. It could be anything that you want on the board. What do you like this week, Trev? Well, I'll go uh, top 20. You could, if you want, bump him to top 10. I'm sure he'll be there. Max Homa, don't be alarmed. I know he's the defending champion, and it's tough to repeat. I don't want him to win. I just want him to keep playing like he's playing. And uh, at 175, top 20. I like it. Look, I would make the statement for Max Homa that he is a better player right now than he was when he won this tournament back in 2019. He's a better player, better all around player. He's always been able to putt. He had the world. He had the record putting week when he won here. Uh, You look at him, you know, at the Genesis, just when he won there, it was more of that complete game. You know, it was Mm -hmm. off the tee. It was the iron game and solid short game. The work that he's done since the U S open um, last year with Mark Blackburn, I mean, the progression is off the chart. This dude is a much better all around player. And then you kind of piggyback on what's already a very good putter that can get really, really warm. I mean, really, really hot. It just wasn't that week in 19. It was Valspar last week, positive five, seven. It was Arnold Palmer, positive eight. Like this dude can start filling it up. And I think he just brings a much better game in. So why not top, t- top 20? He loves the course. Just keep playing the way you are. I think, uh, I think it's a no brainer. I cannot believe this was a plus money. Play. I, know. I know. I I I have a book that, that I, I keep recaps of tournaments, players that I, that are on my permanent buy list and permanent fade list. And they're always moving around depending on how they're playing. And normally I wait one too many weeks to move a player to my, either fade list or buy. Uh, I have not done that with Max Homa. He has shown me when he went from the West coast, we said right here on the show, I said, Oh, he's not going to be able to translate that with all the water and all the, the, the Florida swing. And he played well there. And then he comes back to Valspar in Florida plays well there. This dude has now told himself I'm good enough. He's told himself I can compete with the best at every single course, regardless of the field size or the field strength. That's how good Max Homa has become. So you're talking about the defending champion on this course. And, and, and we're going to be able to get him for plus 175 yeah. for a top 20. This is almost as close to a lock as you can get in golf. In my opinion, I love, mm-hmm. love, love this play. Yeah. I mean, let, let's say this and we know, we know Homa is comfortable in, on this course, in this environment, um, these fields, he's definitely starting to prove himself, right? We've seen that now two wins. I think he's a better player. I love him here. The next step for him now. And I think he knows this is he's got to then take it to the major championships. He's been pitiful yes. in major championship yes. golf. He missed the masters the last two times, uh, missed the cut at the U S open and the PGA just right down the road there at Kiwa. So I think like for him, It'd be interesting to ask him this, but look, we know he knows he can do it here. Like let's go out and play our game, but it's now let's carry that momentum into the PGA and let's be competitive there because I, and I, and I, I expect him to be more competitive, at least making the cuts with the game that he is starting to demonstrate, which to me is more complete from the driver to the putter. I'm going to be interested to find out. I know it's not a big deal and you, you normally don't buy into fatigue, as well, but I live in California. Whenever I work a lot in Florida, it takes me like two or three yeah. days to adjust. I wonder if he and the other California players are going to be going home for the week in between, or if they'll stay on the East coast, kind of like NFL teams do yeah, and just play and, and stay adjusted into that time zone. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll look into that next week and see uh, what, what the players are going to be doing. Uh, all right. My wild card again, I'm going with the big boys. I I'm, I'm getting plus money. <laughs> On a top 10 play, John Rahm, I, I'm again, he, he's the type of guy, he's like a Victor Hoffman, he's like a, a Max Homa right now, that even when he has his B game, Trav, mm-hmm. he's still a top 15 play every single week. And I also liked him in a couple of head to heads. If people at home want to play him, I saw him against JT. I saw John Rahm, I believe, against Rory at a couple of different books. So I think if you can get John Rahm against any of the big boys in the head to head, I would play it. I didn't for the show, but I do like him in a top 10 plus 120. Yeah, I do too. I like Rom here. Um, certainly beginning a little action from me. He was 
fourth back in 2017 here, fifth at the Masters, had a great final round. Just a little chilly putter is all he's been facing, you know, mm-hmm. I think this year. He just, it feels like it's bubbling up. There's there's some great golf coming ahead here for Ron. Perhaps it starts right here at Quail Hollow, which is a place that he likes. This next four months, to me, is yeah. the best four months every single year on the PGA Tour. You throw in the Olympics, you throw in the Ryder Cup this year, all of that, and I am so happy we started cash out when we did. Yeah. So when we get to this summertime, we're really up and rolling. And uh, just for people at home, we're brainstorming some stuff and we're really going to start to try to expand the show. Maybe some Instagram lives too. We've been talking about doing that uh, week to week. So we're going to start expanding uh, because there's more content and you really need to have voices that you can trust and that you can tolerate. And there's two of those right here. Trav, any last thoughts? Are you, <laughs> you, talking, are you, are you talking about me? Are you talking about me? <laughs> final thoughts, you know, Trav. I, I, you know, my final thoughts are, you know, JT hit the ball so good last week, made nothing. Um, so where does that leave him here? Can he hit the ball again, make some putts? He, you know, we've seen the streakiness in his putter. I, I'm pretty, I hate to say it, I'm fascinated again with Deschambeau here, how you know, he's played well here before he's bringing 30 yards to the table. Um, what's that going to look like, you know, from a Bryson standpoint, but make no mistake, Rory to me, you know, what's going to happen here with Rory McIlroy? What's he going to look like? What if Rory just comes out and just goes 65, 67, he's got a one shot lead heading into the week. And I think the best news for golf would be him winning here, you know, and then I mean, can you imagine like the stage, then being set to go over to the PGA. But I think JT's interesting with the putter. And of course, Bryson always is with the distance. I hate to say this, but I think that it's true. I believe that Roy McIlroy has become the new Jordan Spieth of the PGA tour. Cause all these other players that may or may not be struggling right now, they've all had victories in the last mm-hmm. 12 months that we're talking about, but Roy, we're going over two years now Yeah, and he continues to get this pass and when, when Jordan hit that two-year mark, we were riding him pretty hard. Like when he's, and, and then he almost hit the four-year mark before he got back. And by the way, Jordan Spieth intentionally taking a full month off after his great spring. And yeah. I think he's going to have a really good PGA championship uh, in a couple of weeks. Well, I but think he's, you, he's probably going to play the Byron next week, I would think. Yes. Spieth. Yeah, I'm saying yeah. he took a yeah. full month off yeah. before play. Yeah. yeah, he always plays all the Texas right. events. Um do you agree with that statement that Rory is the new Jordan Spieth of the PGA tour? I don't think he's there yet. We, he's not struggling to the level that we saw Jordan. Um, okay. You know, Jordan was really struggling there for, for a long time, not just a driver. Then he lost his putter. I know Rory looked bad when we saw him last, but let's, let's let that play out. I don't put it to that level yet, but that's why I'm so fascinated to watch to see mm-hmm. what kind of, um, condition that he is in. I posted on my Instagram, a swing from Rory back in 2011. It was a year after he won his first event right here at Quail Hollow. And one month before he won his first major championship up in congressional. So it was interesting, interesting. just to look at him and his swing and just a little differences that are happening versus when we saw him last, I'm sure he's went back and looked at some of this footage and is like, okay, I just kind of need to kind of do that again. You know? it, yeah, it's okay to go back to, to the 10 year ago, Roy. Uh, yeah. That's it's what okay I was like that. going it's this okay way to do that. <laughs> and winning majors by like eight shots. Remember that? <laughs> oh man. Those were the days. Yeah. Those were the days you can follow him at Travis Fulton golf. One of the great golf mind instructors in the world today at the coach rules is my social media, Instagram and Twitter. And of course our incredible partners, our sponsors at sports pub media, all kinds of great content there as well. Follow them, hit the subscribe button because you never know when there's going to be brand new content dropped right into your feed for Samantha, Cody, everybody at sports pub media, Travis Fulton. I'm the coach. Remember, this is the only place every single week that you can cash out with the coaches. Good luck. Tony Fino. See you. 